Welcome back to our channel, where we dive deep into the hidden stories of the Bible that often go unnoticed. Today, we're uncovering a fascinating and little-known chapter in the life of Abraham, his relationship with Keturah, the woman who came after Sarah. Who was Keturah? Why is she important? And how does her story continue to influence the spiritual and historical legacy of God's people today? In this video, we'll explore the remarkable journey of Keturah and her descendants, revealing how they fulfilled God's promise to Abraham in ways you might not have expected. From the influential Midianites to the prophetic significance of her lineage, Keturah's story is a powerful reminder of God's far-reaching blessings and his inclusive plan for all nations. You won't want to miss a single moment of this eye-opening exploration, so make sure to watch until the end. If you find this content as intriguing as we do, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Your support helps us bring more insightful content to you and others around the world. Also, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment below and share this video with friends and family who are eager to learn more about the rich tapestry of biblical history. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and let's dive into the complete story of Keturah. Keturah is a somewhat enigmatic figure in the Bible, mentioned primarily in Genesis, chapter 25, verses 1 to 4. The passage reads, Abraham took another wife, whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Genesis, chapter 25, verses 1 to 2. The identity and role of Keturah in Abraham's life are often overshadowed by his relationships with Sarah and Hagar. However, her role is far from insignificant. The name Keturah itself is rich with meaning, translating to incense or fragrance. This symbolic name could suggest that Keturah brought a renewed sense of life, peace and blessing into Abraham's later years, much like incense adds a pleasing aroma to an environment. This interpretation aligns with the idea that her marriage to Abraham represents a new chapter in his life after the death of Sarah. The timing of Abraham's marriage to Keturah is also noteworthy. Genesis chapter 24 narrates the story of how Abraham, in his old age, sent his servant to find a wife for Isaac. The successful return of the servant with Rebekah, Isaac's wife, marks the continuity of the covenantal promise through Isaac. It is after this event that Genesis chapter 25 introduces Keturah, indicating that Abraham, though advanced in age, was still active in fulfilling God's promise that he would be the father of many nations. The significance of Keturah's marriage to Abraham lies in the continued fulfillment of God's promises. Even though Sarah was the mother of Isaac, the child of promise, and Hagar bore Ishmael, Keturah's sons are also a testament to God's blessing upon Abraham. Genesis chapter 25 verses 5 to 6 emphasizes this. Abraham gave all he had to Isaac, but to the sons of his concubines Abraham gave gifts, and while he was still living he sent them away from his son Isaac, eastward to the east country. Genesis chapter 25 verses 5 to 6. Here, the term concubines refers to Keturah and Hagar, highlighting that while Isaac was the heir of the covenant, Keturah's sons were also part of Abraham's legacy. Abraham ensured that they were provided for, sending them to the east, which not only fulfilled the promise of many nations, but also preserved the unique covenant through Isaac. Furthermore, some Jewish traditions and ancient commentaries suggest that Keturah might have been Hagar herself, reunited with Abraham after Sarah's death. This interpretation comes from the fact that Keturah means binding or tied, indicating a possible reconciliation. However, this is not explicitly supported by the biblical text, and most scholars treat Keturah as a distinct individual. Keturah bore Abraham six sons, and each of these sons became the progenitors of tribes and nations that played significant roles in the ancient Near East. The Bible provides a detailed list of their names and some of their descendants in Genesis, chapter 25, verses 3 to 4. Jokshan fathered Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Dedan were Asherim, Letushim, and Leomim. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephah, Hanuch, Abida, and Elda. All these were the descendants of Keturah. While these names may seem like a simple genealogical record, 
they are much more than that. Each name represents a lineage that contributes to the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham that he would be the father of many. Nations Genesis chapter 17 verses 4 to 5 This promise was not limited to the descendants of Isaac and Ishmael, but also extended through the sons of Keturah, showing the breadth of God's blessing upon Abraham. Now let's further explore to those six sons of Keturah. Number 1. Zimran the firstborn son, Zimran, is not extensively mentioned elsewhere in the Bible. However, it is believed that his descendants settled in the Arabian Peninsula, contributing to the tribes in that region. Some scholars suggest that Zimran's descendants may have been involved in trade, given the significance of the Arabian Peninsula in ancient trade routes. Number 2. Jokshan, Jokshan, the second son, is noted for being the father of Sheba and Dedan. These names are more familiar in the biblical narrative. Sheba is often associated with the kingdom of Sheba, which is later famous for the queen of Sheba, who visited King Solomon 1 Kings chapter 10 verses 1 to 13. Dedan is also significant, as the Dedanites are mentioned several times in prophetic books like Isaiah. And Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 27 verse 15, where they are described as traders, particularly in the context of their dealings with Tyre, the descendants of Dedan, Ashurim, Letushim, and Leomim, are less mentioned but were likely influential tribes in the Arabian region. Number three, Medan. Medan, the third son, is another figure whose descendants are not widely documented in the Bible. However, it is likely that they, like Zimran's descendants, became part of the broader tribal landscape of the Arabian Peninsula, contributing to the diversity of nations that descended from Abraham. Number 4. Midian. Perhaps the most notable of Keturah's sons is Midian. The Midianites are frequently mentioned in the Bible, playing significant roles in several key narratives. For example, Moses fled to Midian after killing an Egyptian, where he married Zipporah, the daughter of Jethro, a priest of Midian, Exodus, chapter 2, verses 15 to 21. The Midianites were also involved in the story of Gideon, where they oppressed the Israelites before being defeated by Gideon and his 300 men. Judges, chapter 6 to 7. The descendants of Midian, Ephah, Ephah, Hanoch, Abida, and Eldar, became prominent tribal leaders. Ephah, in particular, is mentioned in Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 6, as part of a prophecy concerning the future glory of Zion, indicating the wealth and influence that the Midianites through Ephah's line would bring. Number 5. Ishbak. Ishbak, like some of his brothers, is not extensively mentioned elsewhere in the Bible. However, his descendants likely became part of the nomadic tribes that inhabited the regions east of Canaan, contributing to the spread of Abraham's lineage across the Near East. Number 6. Shua. Shua, the youngest of Keturah's sons, is perhaps best known through his descendant Bildad the Shuhite, one of Job's friends, Job chapter 2, verse 11. The Shuhites, like the other descendants of Keturah, were part of the broader network of tribes and nations that descended from Abraham, living in the regions east of the Jordan River. The sons of Keturah were integral to the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham, they spread out to various regions, particularly in the Arabian Peninsula, becoming the ancestors of numerous tribes and nations. While Isaac was the child of promise through whom the covenant would be established, the other sons of Abraham, including those born to Keturah, were also blessed by God and became significant in their own right. Their descendants played varied roles in the biblical narrative. For instance, the Midianites, as descendants of Midian, had both positive and negative interactions with the Israelites. They provided refuge to Moses and were later a source of oppression that God delivered Israel from through Gideon. This dual role highlights the complexity of relationships between the descendants of Abraham. While Isaac remained the child of promise through whom God's covenant would be established, the Bible makes it clear that Keturah's children were not forgotten or neglected. Sis chapter 25 verses 5 to 6 states, Abraham gave all he had to Isaac, but to the sons of his concubines, Abraham gave gifts, 
and while he was still living, he sent them away from his son Isaac, eastward to the east country. This passage is crucial in understanding the broader context of Abraham's legacy. Isaac was indeed the child of promise, the one through whom God's covenant with Abraham would be specifically fulfilled, as seen in Genesis. Chapter 17, verse 19. God said, No, but Sarah your wife shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. However, God's blessings were not limited to Isaac alone. The narrative in Genesis chapter 25 highlights that Abraham, even as he focused on the covenantal line through Isaac, did not neglect his other children. The gifts that Abraham gave to the sons of his concubines, Hagar and Keturah, signify his recognition of them and his care for their well-being. By sending them to the east, Abraham ensured that there would be no conflict over inheritance with Isaac, while also allowing these sons to establish their own legacies. The significance of Keturah's children lies in their contribution to the fulfillment of God's broader promise to Abraham that he would be the father of many nations, Genesis chapter 17 verse 4. While Isaac was the child through whom the specific covenant would be established, Keturah's sons also played a role in the realization of this promise. Keturah's sons were sent eastward to the east country, Genesis chapter 25 verse 6, a phrase that signifies their migration to regions east of Canaan, likely toward the Arabian Peninsula. This migration contributed to the spread of Abraham's lineage across the Middle East. The eastward movement of Keturah's sons ensured that Abraham's descendants would populate various regions, thereby fulfilling the promise that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars Genesis chapter 15 verse 5 and that he would be the father of many nations Genesis chapter 17 verse 4. The descendants of Keturah's son Midian, the Midianites, played a particularly significant role in biblical history. As mentioned earlier, Moses fled to Midian and found refuge there after fleeing from Egypt. He married Zipporah, the daughter of Jethro, the priest of Midian, establishing a familial link between the Israelites and the Midianites. Exodus chapter 2 verses 15 to 21. However, the relationship between the Israelites and the Midianites was complex. In Numbers chapter 31, the Midianites became enemies of Israel, leading to a conflict where the Israelites, under Moses' leadership, defeated them. This interaction highlights the mixed nature of the relationships between the descendants of Keturah and the Israelites, sometimes allies, sometimes adversaries. It also illustrates how Keturah's descendants played significant roles in shaping Israel's history. Interestingly, some of Keturah's descendants appear in later prophetic texts, for example, Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 6, mentions the descendants of Midian in a prophecy about the future glory of Zion. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. This passage speaks of a future time when the descendants of Keturah, along with other nations, will come to Zion to worship the Lord, bringing valuable gifts. This prophetic vision highlights the enduring significance of Keturah's lineage in God's plan for the nations. Keturah's children serve as a reminder that God's blessings and purposes are not confined to a single line of descent. While Isaac was the chosen line through whom the covenant would be fulfilled, the other children of Abraham were also blessed and had roles to play in God's plan, this inclusivity is echoed in the New Testament, where Paul writes in Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. Paul's reference to all the nations includes the descendants of Keturah, highlighting that God's plan for salvation and blessing is expansive and inclusive, the story of Keturah's children reminds us that God's promises often extend far beyond what we might expect, reaching people and nations across the world. Now, let's discover further about the legacy of Keturah's lineage. The descendants of Keturah's sons left a profound impact on the history of the ancient Near East. 
with their legacy woven into the broader narrative of Israel and its people. The various tribes and nations that emerged from Keturah's lineage played significant roles in key biblical events, particularly through the Midianites, descendants of her son Midian. The influence of these descendants extends beyond mere historical mention. They actively shaped the spiritual, political, and social landscape of the region, influencing the unfolding of God's plan. The most well-known descendants of Keturah are the Midianites, who play a crucial role in the early life of Moses. In Exodus, chapter 2, verses 15 to 16, we read, Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water, and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. This passage is significant because it marks a turning point in Moses' life. Fleeing from Egypt after killing an Egyptian, Moses finds refuge in Midian among the descendants of Keturah. Here he is welcomed into the family of Jethro, the priest of Midian, and marries Zipporah, Jethro's daughter. This marriage not only ties Moses to the Midianites, but also signifies the beginning of his transformation from an Egyptian prince to the leader of Israel. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, plays a pivotal role in Moses' development as a leader. In Exodus chapter 18, we see Jethro providing Moses with critical advice on governance. Moses' father-in-law said to him, What you are doing is not good. You and the people with you will certainly wear yourselves out, for the thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to do it alone. Now obey my voice. I will give you advice, and God be with you. You shall represent the people before God and bring their cases to God. Moreover, look for able men from all the people, men who fear God, who are trustworthy and hate a bribe, and place such men over the people as chiefs of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. Exodus 18 verses 17 to 21. Jethro's counsel leads to the establishment of a more structured and sustainable system of leadership among the Israelites, highlighting the significant spiritual and practical influence that Keturah's descendants had on the Israelite nation. This event also underscores the interconnectedness of Israel with the broader family of Abraham, including the Midianites. The Midianites reappear later in the biblical narrative during the Israelites' journey through the wilderness. In Numbers, chapter 22 to 24, the Midianites, along with the Moabites, conspire against Israel by hiring the prophet Balaam to curse them. This episode demonstrates the complex relationship between Israel and the descendants of Keturah, who were sometimes allies and other times adversaries. However, it is in Judges, chapter 6 to 7, that the Midianites play a particularly prominent role. After the Israelites fall into sin, God allows the Midianites to oppress them for seven years. The Bible describes the Midianites as a formidable enemy, for whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them, they would encamp against them and devour the produce of the land as far as Gaza, and leave no sustenance in Israel and no sheep or ox or donkey. Judges 6 verses 3 to 4. God raises up Gideon to deliver Israel from the Midianites, resulting in a dramatic victory where Gideon with just 300 men defeats the vast Midianite army, Judges chapter 7. This story highlights both the power and influence of the Midianites and God's sovereignty in delivering his people from oppression. The legacy of Keturah's lineage extends beyond the Midianites. Her other sons, Jokshan, Medan, Zimran, Ishbak, and Shua, also contributed to the formation of various tribes and nations in the Arabian Peninsula and beyond. These tribes, while not as prominently featured in the biblical narrative as the Midianites, played their own roles in the cultural and political landscape of the region. The spread of Keturah's descendants across the Middle East also fulfills God's promise to Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. Genesis chapter 17 verses 4 to 5 reiterates this promise. Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. 
This promise was not limited to Isaac alone, but extended to all of Abraham's offspring, including the sons of Keturah. Their descendants populated various regions, contributing to the fulfillment of God's word and the diversity of nations that emerged from Abraham's lineage. In conclusion, Keturah's story is a powerful reminder of God's faithfulness and the vastness of his promises. Even those who seem to be in the background of the biblical narrative have a significant role in God's plan. Keturah, though often overshadowed by Sarah and Hagar, is integral to the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham to be the father of many nations. Her descendants went on to play crucial roles in biblical history, impacting the Israelites and shaping the narrative of God's people. Keturah's story teaches us that God's plans are bigger than we can imagine and that every part of his plan is purposeful, even when it seems hidden or secondary. As we reflect on the story of Keturah, let us be reminded that God's blessings and promises are not limited to the obvious or the prominent, but extend to all who are connected to his covenant. May we find encouragement in knowing that God's faithfulness reaches all of us, regardless of where we find ourselves in the grand narrative of his story. Thank you for watching. If you found this video insightful, please like, subscribe, and share with others. And don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, may you continue to seek the fullness of God's promises in your life.